four years since we released the stable modular version of the XORG server. And it's time we start reviewing, or maybe it's the time right, it's right to review a bit what has happened and what hasn't happened very shortly. Um, there is this feeling, it's lingering, it's, it's been felt for quite a while that there's still something missing in this whole thing. Something quite fundamental and, well, lots of things have been moving in XORG, have been moving way too fast from time to time. There's things like libpci access, which were years too early, non-tested, that just went in straight away. This is a lot of movement. Maybe some of it was partly good, but some of it was also partly very bad. So we're <laughs> feeling that we're not really delivering what we should be delivering yet. We're quite a way away. And in recent years, there, the recent year or so, there have been some changes in how the X server uh, commits there um, are being handled. At the moment, there uh, is some, but some way of reviewing patches, at least. This has never happened before. So there are some ways we're trying to improve, apparently. And we are mainly looking at other projects to see how we should manage the XORG project. And maybe this is not really the best idea. We want to take <coughs> over a few things, but we do want to have a more tuned um, process for something as the X server. It's really a stand nice standalone project. And this is mostly a talk about graphics driver stack, and that means all the bits <coughs> dispersed all over your system. So, yeah. We will dive in now. What was modular? And four years later, we can actually review what was good and what was bad. So what was good about modular? And if many people think that modular is the first time that we were able to build um, XF86, as it ended up being named, first time we were able to build X drivers outside of the tree, this was not true. X386, 4.0, the whole uh, build up to 3.9, and Porto that took a few years in the late 90s, um, already gave us the ability to build drivers outside of the tree, and quite easily so. There was an SDK already available. The X386 developers were very forward-looking in this respect, even though they didn't really, they tried to design very well for the hardware from that time, but there were things that were coming up, like multi-head that only happened slightly later, and now there's a completely, the hardware is so different from 10 years ago at the moment. This they could not foresee at the time. And this was an issue in the early 2000s where people, that project was not, <coughs> 2003 was maybe not moving fast enough, but it wasn't all that bad as it was made appear at the time. An issue with the, when I started developing drivers in 2003, the issue then was that almost no distributions came with this fantastic SDK in installed already. The only one that I remember from the time was Arc uh, Linux by Beta Rosenkranzer at the time. Nobody probably re even remembers this. It's been seven years ago. That was the only distribution that actually installed the SDK, even though it was perfectly available. So it was actually made hard for, because people were not really aware of this, it was made a bit harder to actually install uh, an X graphics library. It was actually a very easy process if you had the SDK. So with modular, the, the major change from a driver perf, uh, point of view is that this SDK suddenly was installed everywhere. It was a package that was available everywhere. This was fantastic for a driver developer. Um, auto tools is another big thing. As a driver developer, you're doing your thing. You don't want to care about a build system. You want something that everybody knows. It, there are people here. You can talk ages about how bad LibTool, about how bad AutoConf, how bad everything is. I don't want to care. I want to develop a graphics driver. I don't want to spend too much time um, with the build system for it. AutoConf is, uh, AutoTools is something that everybody knows. It has its issues, fine, but there is no real alternative. Not unless, not unless you want to change every two years from build system. That's also not fun. Uh, another big change is we had the whole tree split up. And here it says clearer structure. Well, the next slide will say something else. It's a clearer structure. Many parts uh, are very easily accessible and very easy to build separately now. This is, this is a good change. So there were many bad things as well that came from this. And not all of them had to do with monitor. XP86 was very, very stable, insanely stable. They even tried to maintain ABIs. 
to invite those companies at the time, this was the thinking, invite those companies that want to do closed source drivers to please, please do a closed source driver. You have to remember, this is more than 10 years ago. This is a completely different situation. <coughs> Nobody was really offering X any support much from the hardware side, not that nice as today. So they even tried to, kept the, to keep the ABI stable. These days, it's actually a problem to keep the API stable. It's, it's went, and it has nothing to do with mother, it's a developer mindset. So we went from one opposite to the absolute other opposite. This is not helping us at all. Uh, one big promise in yeah, 2004 when people were doing the work on turning the uh, X386 tree into a modular tree, early XORC uh, monolithic tree, uh, uh, there was also a lot of work, of course, turning all of this in auto tools. This does not, and splitting up things where it wasn't split up yet, this was a lot of work. And kudos to, to Daniel and whoever else worked on it then because it was a lot of work, nicely done. But it, there, there were lots of changes that are not complete yet, like the proto changes that happened by Peter Hutter a year ago. That was a lot of pain we had to go through that. If we had seen this four or five years ago, it would have saved us a lot of trouble now. This we couldn't foresee then either. We were just too busy or too caught up in other things. But one of the big promises then is that vendors were always patching their trees to get new features in. Today the features are not a problem. We have usually enough features. As a vendor, you have enough features in your server. It's not stable enough. As a vendor, distribution vendor, you're really not shipping the bare server. This is not something that's happening. They're still patching their trees, but from the opposite side. Just like with the stability, highly stable, highly unstable, we went from patching because there were no features. It wasn't doing what people wanted. No. Well, it's still not doing what the, the distribution vendors want, but their features enough, it's just not that production ready. Again, this is getting better. The recent releases with the point releases, that's that's a good system. Reviews, good system, go on. Yeah. yeah. So I think part of the problem was with the huge monolithic releases, if you put out an RC, people would go, crap, a release candidate, I really need to make sure this is mint because I'm gonna have to ship the result. Yeah. We put out the release candidate now, no one cares. Yeah because they assume we'll fix it up in a point release, which hopefully we do. So as long as you never ship a point zero in a stable product, then you should be fine. Yeah, but it's where, where I used to work, not anymore at the moment. Um, we never ship them, we always ship the, later, the latest version. We had trouble enough with the manpower we had at that, that, that place at the time. We had trouble enough keeping up as it was and developing a driver next to it. This was just an insane task for the people here. Yeah. Nobody builds X anymore. Who in, this is a nice little survey I want to have here. Who here has built X since it went mod here? Put up your hands. <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty bad. It's, it's not too bad. It's, what, 25%? 25, let's take it high, 25%. Who here has built an X modular in the last year? Whoa, more than I expected. Um, actually, I should have done this in the first one can't do this on the second one. I'm not doing the X from scratch and just getting Julian Christos excellent Debian, Jital Debian .org trees and running DPKG build package on them and then using that. This is a beautiful solution for somebody like me who just wants to draw right drivers. And I cannot claim that I've built modular for the last three, two, yeah, three years. I haven't built modular at all. Not at all. So the question then becomes, yeah, you're a bad crowd, actually. Why are, why are you so many of you building this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who still tests anything today? Yeah, there are a few. Yeah. Is anyone doing this from scratch with no operating system support? Just using the XR, no. Okay, who is, using, who is using the build script from the modular? Um, who is using that build script? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, who's using that build script? Uh, no, no, I'll answer your question in a bit. Who's using that build script in the tree in modular? Who's using that build script in the last year? I Nobody. I, I did it. You, Daniel? Have you I done this? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Egbert also wrote his own. There are yeah. quite a few people who wrote their own. It's, that's how it is. The problem is that there are two scripts. There is also GHBL. 
Oh, Jared Phillips doesn't work, so don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Debian user, check out Julian. Sadly, he's, he's uh, too busy with his PhD. Check out jit.debian.org. His work there, it's beautiful. It's I, I found this, and I was the happiest. Uh, about six months ago, I ported, finally managed to find the time to port my Unicron driver to 1.7. I was so happy when I saw this. So who only tests anything today? And another big one, it's only X that became modular. Mesa, LibDRM or the DRM Mesa 3 at the time, no way. So the graphics driver problem, graphics hardware is the most complex thing out there. You have a 200 watt card, two teraflops, six displays, whatever, it's, there's nothing like it. 200 watt, CPU is 125 or something, there's nothing like it. It is really unbelievably complex. It's unbelievably complex, it's very diverse. The three are graphics makers that are still alive, they are completely different. There is nothing the same that you can find in there. There's a few lines in there, but that's it. There's a feature war going on, there's a speed war going on between defenders, except for Intel, they just play their own game anyway, with the two others. They're constantly <coughs> battling on features and on speed. And the two others also, all of them actually, six months to a year, and you have new hardware out. You have new support that you have to bring in. Now, as I explained yesterday with my flash from talk, the software that is close to the hardware mimics the hardware. It's always going to be very much the same in a lot of its uh, properties. It's going to be very similar. It's very complex. It's going to be constantly moving. It's new features all the time, new devices all the time. It's always going to be buggy, and it's never going to be stable. We know that this is true for all software. Always buggy, never stable. But for graphics drivers, <laughs> It's a few orders of magnitude more. If you look at the different pieces that are there for graphics drivers, and let's take a fictitious example here, some, something almost the same as a Radeon, you have microcode, you have the DRM driver, you have libdrm, you have the XOR driver, you have the DRI driver, you have a gallium driver, and if it existed already, you could even have media acceleration that are seven different pieces scattered all over your system. That's the complexity of the driver, and it's very unstable, and it unstabilizes the rest of your system. So graphics drivers is a difficult problem. I wanted to do a survey a week ago, but I kind of, this is not, not practical at all. The survey we had was already difficult enough. So we'll, we're, I already talked to Michael here from Phronix, who is taping this. We will probably do this survey with a lot of funny, funny questions. Because I like to be slightly sarcastic. And there are a lot of funny questions, and we will work out a nice survey, and we'll see what people respond. But the answers I will see from this survey is that people will say that most of the bugs they experience in the graphics range, 80 to 90 percent is can be blamed on the graphics driver. It's mostly the graphics driver. Infrastructure is very, very uncommon. It happens, of course, all the time. But compared to the graphics driver's bugs, it's very uncommon. And everybody who is using a graphics driver wants to be able to just grab the latest graphic driver pieces and build them, install them, run them. Everybody wants this very, very easily. And today you only have this for the X driver. Only the X driver because the XP86 people did so much work and we now have the, X, the uh, SDK installed everywhere. So, from a graphics point of view, we can identify four different, um, yeah, the stakeholders in this whole thing. We have the hardware vendors, and the hardware vendors, they want to sell you new hardware in their next release. So if you are using their hardware now, they want you to be happy with their hardware. They want you to be happy with their support. Uh, also, they want you to be able to use new hardware with your existing software. If you want to merge to something else, you move to something else, want to get new hardware, you want to go faster. You want to remain in your familiar environment, especially in the enterprise. You want to keep most of your software that you trust you want to keep this, and you want, may usually want to run it faster. So you want to upgrade the hardware. So the hardware vendors, they also want you to be able to replace your drivers all the time and keep your current software. Distributors, I worked for a distributor for a bit, too short, but oh well. Uh, and they're mostly into packaging and support. And if they're a commercial distributor, Linux distributor or whatever, they are, pay you, they are being paid for packaging and offering you support. They want to be able to take in new hardware support as well without uh, having to change their long QA cycles, 
uh, operating system, anything in there, they want to change as little as possible and just install a new graphics drive for the whole stack. They don't want to bother with anything else because that is a big, big stability issue that they will pay dearly for. If something goes wrong, they will pay dearly and it's going to cost them a lot of money. Users, there are many sorts of users you can identify here. There's a normal your home user, there's the enterprise user, and there is the advanced user like the average Pharaonix visitor. Or for everybody in here, you're the advanced users. There is no difference from a graphics driver point of view between the three. What benefits the enterprise, and it's always a nasty word, enterprise is always scary. What benefits the enterprise benefits everybody else as well. And then the last one, the developers. What do developers want? As I said before, auto tools. I don't want to care about anything else but my driver. This is the first thing. If there is a bug in there, I'll go and fix it. But I don't want to do this. I want to just work my driver most of the, all the time. If I have to go and fix it, not fun. I want to do the driver. What you also want to do is ship my driver, the latest version, ship it to everybody and get feedback. Get patches in. Get it updated easily and quickly. So what everybody wants here is being able... Oh, no, first, 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 first. What does everybody want? But especially since I'm losing two things here, I'm doing the color thing. Uh, adrenaline. So Linux is not ready for the desktop. At this point, we can't say that we are ready for the desktop at all. We're still several years away from that. And most, many people in here are thinking, well, many of the graphics driver developers, they're all thinking, oh, gaming, 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 gaming. We're years and years and years away from gaming if we're not even on the desktop yet. So we, performance is not that important. Features, they're nice. They're marketing performance and features there for all the stakeholders. They're nice, they're a marketing advantage for the hardware vendors and for the distributors. But what everybody really wants is stability and the basic functionality. This is what everybody needs. If you don't provide this, you get very unhappy users. And sadly, um, <coughs> as Mike, Michael's site is like this, there are a lot of people on there, if their 3D driver doesn't work, they will give you endless crap. Uh, but they don't realize that basic functionality is already there, and this is already a lot. If basic functionality works, great, but we don't usually only hear the very noisy people who have a small bug in their 3D driver, while there are so many other things that should be worked on as well. Now, all these three above, they all want the same thing, basically. Except for the developers. At this point, there are only a few developers who take stability and basic functionality above features and above performance. And this is not that great. So, if it wants to switch, ah, oh, it's a very hard slide to render for open office on this dual processing machine. <laughs> Here is a slightly simplified <coughs> graphics driver stack. Here is the XORG server and the separate yeah, XYZ. I wanted to do XXXDRV.SO, but I fought against this. Um, it's a separate, it's being built separately, unlike the other parts here, and this is some very simplified dependencies you have here. You have Mesa DRI, I'm just showing you the DRI driver here, same thing for Gallium. At the top it's also missing, missing media support, but that would just clutter up the place even more. LibDRM and driver specific LibDRM, same build system. Um, this was recently, well recently, um, it was admitted that it was moved, that this used to be one part, a year and a half or so ago it was moved, this part was moved in the kernel and three months or so ago Christian Hogsberg finally adjusted the Mesa DRM tree to actually reflect this which didn't make the, D the BSD people very happy. Um, if you look at the different APIs here, this driver, there are about 50 of them. So this arrow here is actually a very, very stable API there. 50 drivers, if you want to change something, you have to, depending on the features, you have to change a lot of drivers. So inherently, this is very, very stable. Same here, there are about 15 DRI drivers. This is quite stable. Gallium, there are about 10 or so. This is, this, yeah, you can see. No, that, that interface is changing all the time. That interface, because it's handled badly. That's <coughs> later, 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 that all comes. <laughs> here, people are trying to, this uh, is also relatively stable, and you have to know that this line here, the XORG server depends on libdrm 2.3.0, which is from August 2006. That's what the X server depends on here. 
the nice thing about here is because of this thing, Mesa DRI is depending on almost the very latest version of the LibDRM. And this is a very unstable mess. Uh, yeah, the other things, this is all also relatively stable depending on what features, not CPMS <coughs> and memory management is still moving a lot, but that will also become better. If you look at this more closely and look at the different graphics parts, the, point, the things I pointed out already, they're very stable, but there are a few parts which are very, very unstable because they're very little depending on this. These, they can be as unstable as the driver developers want. This part as well, this is also very, very unstable. Uh, ah, this is the idea that was brought up a few weeks ago or a few months ago at XTS. Move the drivers back into the X array. <coughs> so the one good thing about this whole stack, they want to undo. Not a very, very good idea. Why? Because it has no real advantage that a build system or a build test system that already offers. It doesn't offer you anything more. As long as you don't test the hardware, as long as you don't test the features, you're not gaining anything. What it will give us is give people in the in this block the right, like with Mesa theorem, give them the right to just change the API even more. This is the last thing we need at the moment. We need to clean it up, but we need to clean it up in <coughs> such a way. And we knew this can only happen so we need to clean it up in such a way that we are not hurting everybody too much. LibPCI access, don't even try to do that again because next time I will also be more vigorous. Um, I once got blamed by Egbert a few years ago when LibPCI access happened, that it was my fault. I had nothing to do with LibPCI access itself, but I cleaned up the ATI driver, this big ATI driver, we probed everything, uh, and then ran either Mac64, uh, Mac32, or uh, Rage and Radeon. If I hadn't cleaned that up, then this move to PCI access based program would have been a lot harder. So yeah, I'm still visiting a psychiatrist for that one. Anyway, this, what will happen here is that the current X of 86 uh, API will get outlawed. And I would not find it that unreasonable when somebody says, hey, it's been six years, why not change all the symbols in there, change the X of 86 in front and change it to XORG. We can do this now. Great idea. So it's, it's a bogus idea. We don't want this. <clears throat> so, oh, now I get to my, oh yeah, my cool animation. So what we do, try to do is, I already went one too far, this one too much. We want to tie these parts loose from the rest of the tree. We want to tie these loose, we want to tie this loose, we want to try to tie that loose. Until here, and look what will happen then. Will it work? Yay! It worked. Um, this lines thing that they disappeared and came back, if I have time for one second at the end, I'll show you the slide why. If it's possible, we want to get there. What do you see here? <coughs> this is completely driver internal. It just depended upon, by these two, by Gallium and maybe the media exploration, it's completely driver internal. And this is the thing that is really destabilizing the whole system at the moment. Is that what it is? Absolutely not. The Libgear interface is ridiculously stable. We every week, every two weeks, we get a new version. Every time yeah, Intel we, bumps, we, we make we make improvements to the code, do point releases, and we improve API to improve performance and do point release. But while new software depends on new stuff, old software continues running. It continues running because it only depends on this part of the DRM. No, my, my 2D driver and my 3D driver depend on my chipset, the lib DRM. Okay, I don't believe you same. because I see lib this, I see <laughs> that, this yes. block here being bumped every few weeks because there was only driver changes. This block gets bumped every two. And yeah. DRI depends fully on the latest. No, no, it's for Intel yeah. it's two yeah. versions back, but for Radeon it's the latest. Two versions back is a month. A month for the whole Mesa tree with GL on top? This is insane. So this is where we want to go. And suddenly, inside this driver stack, I've done this on I've done this already on Unicron. There is so much you can clean up. There's these headers here. This header here is installed with libc. At the moment, a graphics driver header is installed with libc. The, the development package under Debian for libdrm 
is installing actually a headers, two headers for R300 and for V out of crappy field code with register information. And the lived here, and this is, this is insane stuff. This should not be happening like that. So, yeah, if you move to this, then it's up to the driver developer to decide how stable all this is on this part. This will be inherently stable anyway. So, next slide. Oh, this is actually not too bad. How much time do I have left? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Right. Over half an hour. Okay. Oh, yeah, then we can all go home early. <laughs> or we can have you big argument. <laughs> so, what in the rest of your system depends on anything else? And one more. <coughs> this is where all the dependencies of the rest of your system landed with um, LipX11 and uh, Mesa GL. GL sorry. So they're all over there. There is nothing that directly depends on these parts here. It's only the graphics driver itself. That's fully, that's being, ma being wrapped away by these, by these two at the moment because with all the fancy ideas of moving graphics drivers, dispersing them even further, there's no, no idea where this is going to end. But uh, this... And, and sorry, what's the difference to what we have today in there? Did you not follow the slides or...? <laughs> I, I actually don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm afraid it's lost on me because that looks exactly like everything So you, you mean today. this is one source parbol over here? You could do that if it's possible. But okay, you want to try that's not what you're saying that I You I really did not, you were not <laughs> looking at all. Well, look up. The slides will be available anyway for you guys if you're not understanding it. So, when you, um, the next one is, the next change is if you tie these loose, yeah? No? No? And if the, pa if the package manager even wants to split this up, you want to have one, if, if it's possible at all, if, the, if these things are moving too much, it's up to the driver developer. It's up to the people who are developing these drivers. They, if they move it out, they're free to do in this, this area whatever they want. It's their job. If users are not happy with it, then they blame this. They don't blame anything else. They blame the driver developers here. And if packages want, they can have packages all separately and have their dependencies <coughs> here all separate. This is all, should all be possible, where you just update one of the pieces and just the, they may be a very, a very tight dependency here, which is okay. This is very, this moves a lot. There may be a very tight dependency. It doesn't have to be. It's up to the driver developer. So yeah, here, nothing depends on this directly. It's all the dependencies are on this side of the tree. If you make these more movable, if you care about compatibility in these APIs a bit, you don't have to care much, a bit, then the whole world becomes a lot, lot nicer. And it is okay when you need new features, when you build this against an older X server, or an older Mesa, or older Lithium, older DRM, if you need new features, when you say, hey, this new feature, sorry, we can't offer you that, but we can offer you the basic stuff. We can offer you the basic functionality, and this is what people want. If you say it's half the speed than it used to be, well, people can also, also switch to Shadow with B if it's really not fast enough anymore to do it in hardware. But this is all okay. People want to have the basic functionality first, and the rest can come when the new stuff is making it into the distributions. This can come then. At the moment, if you want to keep it, if you want to keep old, uh, old software, you can just update the driver to fix the bugs you have, because you will have bugs always. So, what am I doing in Unicron? Because I'm not just talking to talk here, I actually do stuff. I have taken my Unicron and I've done with a very, yeah, I've done Radeon HD in between from the last few years, not that much happened to Unicron. Um, Mesa DRI part also didn't move that much in the kernel DRM. Well, it moved a bit, but there was mostly driven by the Taiwanese guys, and it's not really working out. So let's. Uh, there's some versions here. There's a XORT 1.0 version or the 7.0 XORT release and 1.7. Uh, yeah, we got lazy here, but you have to see 2010 is about here, 2006 is about here. But to make it even more visible, let's blend in some distributions. This is where Debian old stable lives. That's Debian Edge. That's Debian stable, Lenny. 
There is Debian Squeeze with uh, Julian Cristo packages from two months ago. That's what I was using at the time. And here's the OpenSUSE 1101 still running on this laptop I usually use this as a workstation. What I'm doing with my Unichrome, and I've been doing this for years because I am the terminal of x86 versus xorg, I took the Unichrome driver outside of it at all and just kept on developing drivers. I used to be compatible until six months ago, until all the way to 4.3, which is a 2.3, a 2003 release of Xcelor. This is how far back my Unicron driver used to build and give you a valid mode with acceleration. I threw this out, I will IMA build. There is nothing, Ubuntu LTS, the oldest Ubuntu LTS is sitting at slightly above 1.0. So this I still can test and still in install. So everything else I threw out. This has been a really, really easy way, but of course I missed out a lot of features here doing Ray on XD. What I'm doing for the Mesa DRI, this is how far compatible I am there. And this tree, this Git tree, is up there. It's my Unicron repository. There's a unified branch in there. This is where it builds now. And it runs just as crappily there as it runs on this side, as it runs on the other side. It's perfect. Linux kernel, easy. Just build and run. Of course, I'm just one guy. I did this week or so. Intel has 12 people working. More? And we're pushing features at a faster rate than you can. As I said, features, <laughs> if features, they're not stable. Features you can disable and say, hey, we're not having this feature. If that's a user that really wants this feature, they will do this. They will update the rest, but don't force this on anybody. At, at the else. point where we decided that we weren't going to do this anymore, I mean, we used to have support you from know, no, you 1.6 never did. to one. One or one two. This is at all the in one tree. Move that old this support? is one autocom. This is one make. I will prove this now. Right. So at the point where we removed all that compatibility, we deleted a significant fraction of our bugs because it was all interactions with different versions of interfaces, if that's everywhere, and nobody was testing on old servers. Because, because you were not a, even allowing it. But well, that's how I feel. <laughs> Well, I, I don't like it when, um, when major developers tell an enterprise distribution three months before they're about to release their enterprise version that their whole business model is wrong. This is not what should happen. It, was not, it wasn't you. <laughs> Everybody that knows who. So, unified building X driver. Ever since we had, if we had a SDK, this is how it works. We have all the tools. We all know this. All have done this. Well. At least 25% of these things. <laughs> Linux DRM for my driver. If you have KBuild installed, if you have the headers installed for your Linux version, you just run make. When you have run configure, you run make, you're done. When you have the DRM, you can just install it. KBuild headers, they're just Debian packages. Very easy. And you can also do this on the SUSE, but I think I need a slightly more work here. <laughs> So, Mesa DRI is a really ugly one. You have to especially prepare your Mesa tree. You have to run some figure, then descend down into this directory and run make lit Mesa above A. And then you just point my driver tree to this Mesa directory and build. Not that hard. Of course, getting over the interface changes, that took me most of that week. That was. That was painful. So, where do we go from here? The more people who start doing unified trees, the more people who start breaking up these hard connections that are there now, the more that people will start to care about APIs. This will happen naturally. And the APIs will evolve better and in a way that is easier to track. Tracking API changes is, is very painful at the moment. In all these parts, it's, it's very painful. And the, the really painful one is Mesa DRI, even for a driver that hasn't moved that much. That was really painful, because nobody cares. And I think most of these changes could have been avoided for the changes I've seen in my Unicorn driver. If you want to plug in feature, that's it. As I said, you can disable features. <coughs> Find it. Many users will be happy. Until their next big distribution upgrade, they will be happy with disabled features or less speed. And at the same time, you already get everything else tested. You get feedback on everything else. So kernel DRM, it's not that hard. It's repository changes. We just went through a big change already. But the longer term, uh, as a driver developer, as 
some of the guys, or one of the guys who actually saw some lines in mode setting in the last few years. I do not like how everything is just meshed together or mashed together in the deer and driver. It's all just thrown in one piece. Change this, pull this out, and suddenly things will start making a lot more sense for tracking features and tracking dependencies. It's, if you change that, it just looks a bit more messy, but the interfaces can be tracked so much better. Lip DRM, this driver specific part, move this out. Go for your own version for your own uh, driver internal. Yeah, it's almost a convenience library. Move to your own versioning and suddenly the link to Mesa will become a lot more sane. It will be very easy after that. Same thing again. Oh, this is a nice one as well. Check out USR include DRM and find out through your package manager either RPM minus QF or DPKG minus big S, capital S, on the files there and find out which packages all the files in there belong to. And also notice the two register definition files in there. It's not how it should be. Not for driver specific things. Same thing about mode setting memory management and standard lib DRM, standard lib DRM, um, like committing, uh, sum, uh, submitting command buffers. Those things are actually, they can be fairly modular, they can be pulled apart, they can have nice separate interfaces. Split there, and your life will become slightly easier. The life of the driver developer is already hard enough. Mesa. Mesa is at the moment is about 120 megabytes of source. And even the releases that are happening, every time there's a major release of Mesa or a minor release of Mesa, they're already shipping this in three different tarballs. So there is already a clear line there, the three different tarballs. Maybe it's time to start modularizing some of this. The interfaces are doable, and it's actually, when you look into the whole build system there, you see a nice little convenient, nice little, nice convenience libraries all the way already, and you can split there and try to formalize the APIs for these libraries. If you make these libraries, if you make them shared objects, you will probably lose one or two percent or whatever um, speed because of the lookups, because that's the only reason that I've been hearing so far that stuck. The only reason why this, check here, yeah, this is something maybe you should also do. Check USR um, slash lib slash DRI, check the size of any of the DRI drivers in there you will be looking on an AMD64 system at 2.6 megabytes. 2.6 megabytes. And even the most feature-rich driver for a DRI, the Intel driver, the source code is what, 1.3 megabytes? So if you compile some source code, 1.3 megabytes, and you end up with a binary, a strict binary that is 2.5 megabytes. What? what the Red Hat guys did there is they said, oh, look, I have this libmesa.a, I'll just make it libmesa.so yeah. and provide no API guarantees because it's all part of the same package, right? The the dot .so and the things depending So the Red Hat guys are doing this? Yeah. yeah. They're installing it's, it's, it's trivial. trivial. It's and, and it gets you the size win while not requiring that you provide stable APIs from Mesa. But if you move the drivers out, you become more stable automatically. It's always a push and pull. It will always be push and pull. <laughs> no, it's always be, it will be push and pull. But if the drivers are out there, there is another hurdle that you have to jump over before you make a change. And you spend a bit more time thinking about the change. And often in such a case, you will find a better way of doing it, or at least being able to track it better. This, this happens naturally, at least it should. So yeah, make them share the objects and try to formalize these APIs and make it so that you can build against it. Add some PKG config and packaging and try to build against, uh, try to have drivers build outside. And then the world will become quite a lot better, I hope. Anything else I was going to say? <coughs> Thanks to call of remote. I had adrenaline like yesterday. I'm 20 minutes short. So questions. And we can have a big discussion in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a comment about the Mesa and DRI thing. I think from my perspective, looking at the classic Mesa drivers, if you experience with Radeon, it's really not correct to think of Mesa as a shared library that you use. The interface is so broad, it's more like a toolbox for building drivers. And so I think the splitting out is not really that feasible. Gallium is a different story, but, but Mesa, I mean, it's the same argument that the kernel guys have for, for keeping drivers in the same tree. 
is you really want to be able to change some of these data structures, want to make modifications there. Mm -hmm. As I said, Gallium is already in a state where it may, might make more sense to go in this direction, but for classic... How long have you been in the vicinity of X? Uh, I started 2003 with the company. Yeah, pretty much when I started. You also heard stories about KGI, GGI, mm -hmm. and how FB got treated, and how it was very hard to get this even accepted or acknowledged by the kernel people at the time. Because graphics hardware is unbelievably unstable. And there's a lot of, th when, you see, when you see all the emails for, from the kernel people at the moment, there's a lot of stuff going back and forth between the kernel all the time. All of a sudden. I, I would love to be able to have all the Radeon stuff in one single Git tree and not worry about the <coughs> internal interfaces. But the thing is that the interface to, to Mesa Core for the classic driver is just so big, it's, it's infeasible. Uh, X out. itself is not that easy either. It's, it's going to be bigger. X itself, everything, everything that is currently the X driver, this interface, I think it might actually be bigger. No, than the Mesa Classic. I, I, I don't think so. But I it's mean, worth a try. I mean, the X API is rubbish and incredibly ill-defined, but Mesa Classic? <laughs> <laughs> but for Gallium, at least for Gallium, it should be very yell, like, basically, yes. More or less, you can look at all of these state that the OpenGL spec describes, and <laughs> it's in Mesa, plus some computer state, depending on it. It's big. Um, but it has, it is a huge advantage for doing extension enablement, um, which, you know, we get pushed on on a regular basis of, we want new extensions. Extensions features. Um, yeah, like, so you those, can, you're those allowed those to disable these and say, hey, I'm not doing for this. For OpenGL are about extension support and performance. Yeah. Um, and you're, and so you're have to build something, get something older, you can say, hey, I don't have to reflect what it needs to be to get the performance and features. Like if I have to... Performance and features, this is what I'm saying all the time. If you, you let the people who want to build this or you want to update their current driver, you at least give them what they had before. You don't give them the new performance or the new features. They don't want this. They want to fix their current issue. They want to continue working. And, and we do have the Mesa stable branches for that, right? If you want a small bug fix, we put Yeah, but then the everybody the else has to go and pull uh, bug fixes and look into all the changes that happened there and pull bug fixes back. If you have this separate oh, already... Oh, I, I, I pull the bug fixes back in Mesa for my driver. Okay. Like, yeah, I, you know, I run the test suite. I've got... I write tests for failures that we have. But you I don't even have suite, to do this. I verify that my cherry fix fixes the bugs. If you have your driver external and a bit backward compatible, back dis disabling feature or performance, that's fine. If you have this anyway, then people will be using the rest of the code shared. There will be no bug fixes you have to backport. You just have it's to be careful about the stuff the you add. about the abstraction yeah. of the API that you built in order to work across all those different versions of things. Like, we I tried this experiment mm -hmm. in the Intel driver, and then we gave up on it. I tried it in Unicom just now in this building against these five versions, or this, all the way to stable. Stable is three years ago, they've been stable. That's quite a long way, a long time for Mesa. And yeah. there's quite a few changes where I think, was this really necessary? Was this change really necessary? And I'm just one guy. Yes. I'm not for <laughs> Unicron. No. I'm just one guy and I manage easily. 12, 15 people, I don't know how many people you have. You should manage. And it's not you who should be telling the, the your clients or the next distribution vendors that they're having a wrong business. This is something I do not accept. So, any more questions before we continue the discussion in more different front? Harold? Yeah, I think it's even more important than it is today that it can do metrics and changing your source code, which versions of which parts are committed and which you have to combine with gradients to make the creator running right now. Right now, it's a real mess with an export for it. Uh, we can find okay, any version of the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what about if, if your drivers, because 80% of the bugs are going to be in the drivers anyway, if your drivers are backward compatible and can be built pretty much in everything that's current, then the package managers, there will be package managers who will be doing this for you all the time. Users can just go and say, hey, let's update the latest package of this driver if they have an issue. So tracking this, tracking this will be done by package management first. In the package manager of the distribution has left the information which version of this 
he has the companion and pick up. And I have to uh, compile a new expression for a little distribution. No one does this one. So I have to have a response. But what I'm saying here, Harold. You're, you're talking about the X server. I'm talking about the driver. And the driver can be one big package. It can be one big blob, maybe may even broken up in different packages. He, he's, he's also talking about it. Too. You need the whole matrix. This version of the driver is that takes the whole matrix. Yeah. But if an auto comp is doing this for me, <coughs> Autocomp is detecting, detecting all this yeah, for me. Well, you, 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 you were also talking about the inside board, so... I managed for, It's a, just a proof of concept. It was the really easy thing to do. And it's something that allows me to move very fast in the future with Unicrome as well. It was the really easy thing to do. Probably Unicrome is the only hardware that still sells where you could do this for that easily. But on the other hand, Intel... There's an enormous amount of manpower there. You should manage. They support a lot more hardware than you would invent. Then um, they support a lot more features, of course. For but I support all the hardware that's out there. Yeah, but there's a lot more Intel hardware out there than Unicron hardware. Sure. And making that basically work. Um, a Unicron is currently at what? 0.3% of the market and shrinking by 20% a year. So, <laughs> right, like I support a lot of OMAP hardware. Yeah. But yeah, of course, in, in your world, it's it's ruling everything. Eric, I, I manage this. There's code sitting there. You can install stable and you can do the trick with this. Yeah, it's really hard to do. Yeah, so, how's, how's your uh, frame buffer on this? What? How's your frame buffer on this?